Now that we've got a basic game structure happening, I'm going to show you what we can do to get levels as well in our game. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to do this, um, just programming it into your world. So we're going to go into the ocean class here. What I'm going to do is make it so that once the um, fish have all been eaten, that we'll pause the game and maybe put up a message and then um, restart the level. And what I'll do is I'll make the game go a little bit faster and I'll add more fish. So each time you complete a level, the speed of the game would increase. So the fish move faster, your opponents move faster, and the sub can move faster. Um, and the amount of fish you have to eat would go up as well. So um, the first thing I'm going to do to make this a little bit more versatile is I'm going to make a method out of this um, populating the world. So I'm actually going to cut this right out of my code. And then down here, I'm going to go and make a public void um, populate method. And this is all the change I need to make there. So it's the identical loop, but now I can call it in a method instead. So up here, if I go to my constructor, I'll just say populate this with 10 fish. And Again, it hasn't changed anything yet, but you'll see why it's important that I have this method around. And again, it's just generally good programming um, practice that we don't um, have very long methods, that we try and keep this procedure contained. And that way, if we want to populate the world, um, I just call the method. I don't have to keep using this code over and over again or tracing my errors through all these different um, spots where I have my code. I know it's just contained in the one method. So um, I'm going to populate the world. now. The other thing I want to want to do here is um, I'm going to keep track of what the maximum score is. So in our world, that's just fish. So I'm going to make a, an integer here called fish. And when I start the world, fish is a zero. There's no fish in the world. But whenever I populate the world, I'm adding fish to it. I definitely want to make sure that if I call that method, I update um, my private member variable here. So now the ocean itself is keeping track of how many fish were a maximum, how many were put in the world. So I'll make one more method here that someone can ask for. And I'll put max score. And I'll just say return that fish count. Okay, so I'm going to combine these ideas now and use it to make the level. And what happens is when the world is acting, that's where it's going to make the decision of whether or not the level changes. So right here, I'll make a decision to see if the level needs to be changed. And the way I'll do that is I will go if player dot get fish count is the same as the maximum score. Then I'll increase the difficulty. So now I'm going to create um, a new world where I'm going to be adding extra fish. So one thing that we could do is um, we probably want to put some kind of message up there. So I'm going to um, just copy and paste this one here. Um, except instead of saying game over, this is going to be called next level. And of course, you can make a more creative message if it's something that you um, want to spend a little more time on. But I just want to give you the general idea here. And we'll put it right in the middle. And now that it's going to throw that up there, next level, or maybe I'll just put level complete. I like that a little better. Um, now that it's complete, what I want to do is pause the game. So if you go into your Greenfoot documentation, there is a delay method here. And it's the, the number of time steps, so that's the number of act methods that you're talking about here. Um, so anyways, we can fool around with how long that's going to take so that it looks good, but basically I'm going to go green foot dot delay, and let's just start with, we can see if 100 looks appropriate later, but we'll try 100 um, um, calls of the act method and see. Um, just in case we're waiting around, maybe I'll make it 50. Okay, so then, now that I've um, told them that the level is complete, what I'm going to want to do 
is um, repopulate the world with more fish. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to make my method here. But this time I'm going to say populate it with the amount of fish you have. And why don't we increment it by five fish at each level. Um, that's just sort of random, but you could come up with some other you know, more extravagant rule for increasing the level, but five more fish um, in the next level. So if there was 10 fish, next time there'll be 15. Then if there's 15 fish, there would be um, 20 fish here. The next thing we're going to want to do is um, increase the speed. And the way you do that in Greenfoot is there's a set speed method. So um, oh, here it is right under delay. So the thing to know about setting the speed of the world, it's the slider that you're used to seeing here, um, this speed slider. But and the number has to be from zero, or sorry, from one to a hundred. So you can think about it like a percentage. For example, this would be a hundred at a hundred percent of the bar, and then this would be down here, this would be zero, it would be zero percent of the bar. But we, um, we go from one to a hundred, otherwise there is no speed. So right where the mouse is now, that's at 50. So when we're working on um, you know, what speed to do in our level, I think generally the default comes in about f the speed of 50. And um, that's what will we'll make our game. We need to keep track of this level so we can increment the difficulty level. So let's make a variable here to do it for us. So in here, I'll initialize it. So speed equals 50. And then I will go greenfoot.setSpeed to be that variable there. That way, when I want to update my level down here, I can go greenfoot.setSpeed to be what it was, say, plus well, the problem is going to be I, I can't go past 100. So um, I could do something like um, int next speed um, equals what it was before. Plus, let's say it goes up by, well, we'll do 10. Um, I'll only get five levels out of this because I'll go 50, then I'll get 60, 70, 80, 90. So I guess I'll get um, at 100, which would be a crazy fast game. But anyways, I would get um, some speed there. So I would have um, six levels, but they'd be crazy levels. Uh, maybe I'll make it five then. But the point is I can't go over 100. So I'll just say if next speed is greater than 100, then let's just cap it at 100. And um, here, though, I also have to update now to keep track of that, that this next speed is, is uh, the value for the, the old speed now. I want to save that. So if you've been, um, I guess if you've been picking up the habit of making methods, this should, I guess it doesn't really make you cringe, but it should make you notice that something's wrong with what I just did. I did that on purpose to see if you would um, be thinking about making a method out of this. And the reason it would be nice to tidy it all up with a method is this management of the speed and keeping track of the current speed is something that the ocean needs to do. And here I'm just sort of hard coding it in. And I would get away with it because this is the only part where it's happening other than up here in my constructor. But Instead, what I'm going to do is create a method just to make it um, a little bit more tidied up. So down here, I'll split my task up again and say public void set speed. Um, and when I do set the speed, I want to update this um, variable here. So what I'm going to do is basically what I've got here. So I'm going to go like this and say whatever speed you want to use, that's fine. I'll update my private member variable and then I will ask Greenfoot to set its speed accordingly. And that way up here I can just call set speed and my initial speed which is 
right in the middle of the game at speed 50. And then down here, um, I'm also going to try and, and mimic that part of incrementing the speed. So this little error catch, I'm going to add this feature to my set speed method. Because anytime someone wants to call this, it is public. I don't want them to cause an error. And they would do that if they tried to do like set speed 200. So here I'll just say, um, if the speed they gave me is over 100, then um, speed equals 100. That's the fastest possible anyways. Otherwise, you can use the one they gave you. And I suppose, you know, if we're trying to be really bulletproof about this, I should also um, tidy it up just a little bit more and say else if speed is less than 1, then use the speed at the minimum. So that way, whenever I call set speed from now on, I don't have to worry about updating the private member variable and checking that everything is within bounds. It's just contained in this one method. So basically here, next speed will be the speed plus 5. And then all I have to do is call my set speed method for the uh, next speed. And it'll worry about whether that is, in fact, oops, did I spell that right? Yeah. Um, and I don't have to worry about whether um, you know it's in bounds, and if uh, you know I've updated my private member variable, I can just simply call set speed. So this should work then as far as um, putting the extra fish in and then increasing the speed. So you know I'll try to play this for you just so you can see what would happen. Um, but the only problem is, of course, you got to hope that I don't get killed by these torpedoes. Level complete, and there it is. Wow, and my opponent is way better than me now. So, of course, we could tweak how fast everything is going in this game, but uh, whoa. <laughs> anyway, that's um, uh, just kind of an, an indication of what the game would look like as it speeds up. Uh, my score keeps going up. This time I'd have to hit 25 to get to the next level. Um, and, you know, like I say, you could do a tweak here, like you could add, you know, two to the speed. Um, but uh, the other thing that's in here, you might have noticed that the level complete didn't disappear. So after the delay, I'm going to go here and say remove the object. Um, and this was next level. We basically just wanted it to flash that one time. So I can remove it now. And I guess we'll just have a quick peek here if that's appropriate for uh, speed. Whoa, okay, maybe I'll be able to do this here. Let him hit my opponent, and then I'll go get that last fish. Level complete. Oh, okay, so that's a little more reasonable, but <laughs> it's quite fast. So um, that's one way you can do your level. Another way is, of course, to create an, a whole other world for it. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do here. So, for example, maybe I want to add a, another world, and now I introduce like obstacles, or um, I can even put new opponents or, or other things in there, two computer uh, um, sharks if I like. But I'm just going to do a real simple one. And it's basically going to behave exactly the same way an ocean does. Um, so I'm, I can use a subclass of the ocean, and then all of the code that I've created, I could reuse. So I'm calling this one um, the reef, and I've got my my image already and my image I'm using I purposely uh, shrunk it with Photoshop to be the exact same size so um, that way I don't have to change the size of my screen when I'm playing this game it'll be the exact same size as before and at this point anyways I don't need um, I don't need any code I can just reuse all the code that I've already written oops sorry in the ocean class see all this code here I could just reuse it um, so anywhere I needed to call it, I can call it in the Reef class. If I didn't make it a subclass like I have, then I'd have to retype those methods in order for the world to know what to do with the Reef. So let me just show you here how you quickly change this to add. Um, let's see here. Here's my act. So now what I could do instead is, um, now that I've gotten to my maximum score, um, instead of using the same world, and I'll just 
co um, comment this out. What I'm going to do is create a reef. So I'll say reef um, next equals new reef. And then there's a command in Greenfoot to set the world. So in this one, um, you know, if I wanted to change the speed and all that kind of, um, you know, the speed and the amount of fish I have, that's one behavior I could change in the reef instead of having it here. So I do have this max score. I can get how many fish were in the world by using max score, but I don't know what level it is, and it probably would be handy to have access to that level. All I have to do is write a simple method to return it. So I'll say public int um, get speed. That way I can just return the speed variable to whoever asked for it. And I'll show you where I'm going to ask for it. I'm going to use a reef here. And when I build it, it'll call on the ocean, who already puts in, I believe, the 10 uh, fish. So once it's already been put in there, I'm going to populate it with five more fish. That way. Um, there would be 15 fish on the screen. Um, and the other thing I want to do is to work on the speed. So I can call the set speed method. And remember, it's not in my class here. I'm inheriting it from the ocean. So I don't have to retype all that. That was why I wanted to make it a subclass of the ocean. And that's what you can see here in Java written out as extends ocean. I could do extends world, but then I'd have to retype all these methods. And I don't want to do that. So. What I'm going to do is set the speed to super.getSpeed. And what that does is it says, OK, don't use the speed in this. Um, if, I, if, I did, if I did that, it would get the speed um, from this class, which I suppose would be fine. But ask the parent how fast you were going. And let's add 2 to that level. And now I'll be able to increase the speed for the next level. So again, if you want to get more creative, you could put obstacles or other opponents and different characters or different fish, different scoring, whatever you like in the next level. But I'll just show you what happens here. And again, I just have to hope that I'm able to get through this without getting hitting those fish or the torpedo. OK. So I'll let him hit the shark, and hopefully I get that last fish. OK. So now level complete, and boom. There's my new coral reef background. And the shark has eaten some of it, but there are, in fact, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, because the shark's already eaten one. Um, and of course, you know it's very hard to see, but the score here we probably want to change the color of the score to like white just because the background is what it is. So um, again, other things you could do when you implement a new level. But hopefully that paints a picture for you of how to change or um, add new levels to your game.